Use effect is one of the greatest features ever added to React and it's so much nicer than the old component lifecycle system, but you should be using way, way less use effects. Honestly, if you have a use effect in any of your components, you're probably using use effect the wrong way and you should remove it. Now this sounds crazy, but I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about, how I use this in a real world project and why it makes writing code in React so much easier and so much nicer. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're talking about use effect. Now right here I have my career fair project that I've been working on for a while open. I've taken a bit of a break from it, which is why you haven't seen any videos on it, but it's a fairly large project. You see we have a bunch of different components. If you can see I opened this up. We also have this pages directory here. You know, we have a ton of different pages throughout this application. It's a fairly large application, you know, not just some toy application. But when I do a search for use effect, you'll notice I only use use effect in seven different files in my entire project. And of those seven files, I only use it 23 separate times. And that actually counts the import statement, which means in total, I use use effect 16 times in this entire project. Now that may sound crazy, but by doing this, it actually has made my code so much easier not only to read, but also to write. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I would go about removing these use effects and how I go about replacing them with other things. So the first thing I wanna look at actually is going to be this file right here. This is a fairly large file. If we just scroll down, you can see it's quite large. We have our component at the very top here, and this has you know some information at the top, some logic basically. Then we have a big return statement that contains all of our JSX markup. And then finally, we have here a custom hook that is used for this component, and this contains a bunch more logic. As you see, it's quite large. So if we scroll to the very top, if we look at our actual component here, you can see we have some logic at the top. We have like authentication, our router, some different state. This use collection data is just querying Firebase essentially. So it's a Firebase query, and this is just getting some data. So essentially more data. This is filtering our data to get exactly what we want. This right here is using that custom hook that's defined at the bottom of this page. Then we have more getting data. So again, just like more state, filtering that state. Finally, we have here another custom hook that is not implemented in this file. It's a more global custom hook. Some more filtering of things. And then finally, a couple functions for you know doing on-click event listeners and things like that. Then you can see we have this giant return statement and then that's the end of our component. But you'll notice nowhere in this component do I have any use effects. I have a bunch of custom hooks, things like use collection data, use job listing search form and so on. And some of these custom hooks, they actually use use effect behind the scenes, but I don't have any use effects in my actual code. And this is really nice because use effect is kind of ugly. The actual you know, interface for it and the actual API for it is pretty ugly, it's pretty difficult to use, it's pretty difficult to read. So not having to look at that is so much nicer. I can just be like, okay, use collection data, that's super straightforward. It gives me an array of information. Or like use job listing search form. This is for dealing with job listing search forms. And it doesn't even look like I'm using a use effect for any of these because there's no information being passed around. But when I go and look at these different custom hooks, for example, this use job listing queue here, this all it does is it takes an array of job listings. So it takes almost nothing at all into it. And as you can see here, it has a bunch of logic, but here's where my use effects are. As you can see, I have a use effect here that handles some stuff and a use effect here that handles some stuff. Essentially, it deals with the queuing. So like I wanna show a toast message anytime things in your queue change. So if you have like more or less people in front of you in line, it's going to update and say, hey, you're number seven in line or something for the job fair. So that's essentially all this is doing or for like remove from the queue. That's all this is doing is dealing with that queue logic. And then we have some functions that we return down here. You'll notice I'm not exposing that use effect out of this custom hook. I'm not actually writing this use effect or dealing with anything at all with the side effects of the use effect in my actual component where I use this hook. The use effect is stored away inside this custom hook and nothing else accesses it, nothing else deals with it. And it just kind of is there in the background doing its thing. That's what use effect was meant for in React. It wasn't meant as a way to write, you know, 20 different use effects inside of your component and have them all do different things. That's just difficult to read and difficult to manage. Instead, it's meant to be put into smaller custom hooks that deal with that logic for you. And that allows you to write really small components. This component, while it does a lot of things, the actual code for the logic of my component right here is fairly straightforward. There's really not much. I can fit almost all of it on a screen just one screen, even using this very large font size that I use for recording videos. So this is like the general idea of how I think components should be written. You know, you have all of your logic and custom hooks if applicable, and if your custom hook is only used in one file, just define it in that one file, that's perfectly fine, that's what I've done here. Otherwise, you know, break it out, for example, this use collection data is used all over my entire application, so it's broken out to its own hook if we click on that. Real quick, you can see that it's a very simple hook. It just uses a library to do this. Essentially, I just have a bunch of TypeScript stuff around it. That's why I created a custom hook for it beyond what the library is doing. But as you can see, you know, I have that custom hook and then I have a couple other custom hooks and that's how it works. 
So now I want to show you some more examples of how I use use effect in this project about where maybe it's a bad idea or maybe where I've done it in the wrong way. So one thing that I want to look at here is let's look at this preview modal. So here I've used use effect twice as well. We're going to open that up real quick. Again, this is a fairly large component, but not quite as big as the other one. If we scroll down here a little ways, we have our modal. Here we have just some state. Then we have a form that we're dealing with. This is also some form related stuff. We have a custom hook right here for audio levels. And then I have a use effect, a use callback, and then a use effect again inside of my component logic. This, in my opinion, is a red flag, and this should not be here. As you can see, I have a bunch of to-dos because this actual component is not completely finished. It's mostly working, but it's not how I want it, which is why all this use effect stuff is in line right now. I'm writing it out to try to get it to work, and then as soon as I have everything working, I'm planning on taking out these use effects because all that these use effects do is they deal with getting the video and the microphone input from a user. As you can see here, we're getting the video input and we're getting the audio input. That's all that this use effect does, and this one essentially does the exact same thing, just does some other stuff with your audio. So these should be moved out into a custom hook, like use video and audio, or use video, or something like that. And I can just define those way down here at the bottom of this file, or if I need to use video and audio and other components, obviously I would break that out into its own custom hook. For example, I have here this use audio levels, and this right here is a custom hook that is going to be used in multiple places in this application, and I have use effects inside of here to deal with all of this information. Now, as you can see, I still have a lot of work to do. I got a lot of comments inside of here, but I have all these use effects. It's kind of broken out and separate from the rest of my project, which is exactly what you want when it comes to use effects. As you can see, this returns a level, and this level, I think, is just a number. Yeah, this literally returns a single number, and all the logic for dealing with what that number is is taken care of inside this custom hook. All the custom use effects are doing that for me, and then in my component, Literally, it's one single line. It just returns to me a number, which is perfect. So in most cases, when I'm looking at other people's code, this is kind of what I see their code looking like. You know, they have their use effects just in line for dealing with certain things, and they just have individual use effects like, okay, I need to do this one thing, one off, one time. I'm just going to write that in the component. Really, if you're doing that, I'd highly recommend rethinking that, putting it in a custom hook, and just putting it in the same file if it's small, or break it out if it's something you use everywhere, for example, like a use fetch hook. If we look at another example here, if I just open up, we have this next page right here. This one has four separate use effects, and all of them are bad. Essentially, all of these are inline use effects, and they all deal with the same thing. This is a page that allows me to essentially check a user to see if they properly passed LinkedIn quizzes, and every time I click next, it'll load me a new user. So every time the user change, changes, I need to do a bunch of different things to the actual UI of this page. So I have a bunch of use effects for doing that. And this one use effect right here just loads all my user data. This is terrible. I should not write code that looks like this because all of this use effect code, if I remove this, as you can see, this component is very, very straightforward. I mean, I can fit the entire component, rendered content and all on one page. And I could just have a simple hook that's like use user, just like that or whatever. And that custom hook could contain all of this logic right here that I just removed. So all of these different use effects could be inside that custom hook. And that would be a much better way of writing this. It's easier to know what's going on because if I just gave you this, do you know what all these different use effects are doing? I mean, no, I don't even know what they do. But the reason that this page is not as good or well-written as some of my other pages is this is just an admin page that I threw together really quickly because I needed to do these this thing really easily and quickly. So I threw together this admin page in like one day, just super quick, threw all this code together. And you know, this is what I ended up with, this really ugly code. Now, one of the most common things people use use effect for is going to be for fetching data. In this application, I don't have any fetches at all. I don't think, at least if I just search for fetch here, for example, you can see, I mean, I have a bunch of fetches, but they're just in my package JSON. And yeah, I have no instances of fetch being used. And that's because I'm using Firebase for everything. So I'm using a library to interact with Firebase through that way. And if you're not using Firebase, for example, I would recommend using something like React Query or any other type of fetch-based library to make sure all your fetches go through properly. That's going to make it so you don't have to write a bunch of use effects for your fetch because a library like React Query, that's going to handle all that use effect nonsense for you behind the scenes, and it just makes working with them easier. But if you don't want to use a library, just write your own custom use fetch hook. They're super easy to write for the most part, and you can make it so that it you know, has all the data you want, loading, error, everything like that. And it's just going to be one line instead of having every time you need to fetch data, you know, having a massive use effect. Now, this entire video just mentions one mistake with using use effect in too many places. If you want to know six other mistakes that developers make when it comes to use state and use effect, I have a full video on it. It's going to be linked right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.